I did it. I did it for you. I watched 13 hours of Jessica Jones season three, so you don't have to. The best thing I can say about Jessica Jones season three is that it's not nearly as bad as Jessica Jones season two. Man, season two was a real slog. It was all about mommy issues and yeah, Trish Walker desperately wanting to be a superhero. Pretty boring stuff. This season was actually okay. It was better than a CW show. Nowhere near as good as any of the Daredevil seasons. Nowhere near as good as Jessica Jones season one. But it was certainly better than Iron Fist, any of those seasons. This is kind of the problem with Marvel's, with Marvel's Netflix shows. Just really disappointing overall. It's the season ones were great, except for Iron Fist. And then, I don't know if they replaced people or what happened for season two, but man, it just went down the toilet quick. So, one thing they did nice about the season is with Jessica Jones, she's so physically strong, you can't really put her against other people, right? She'll just beat the crap out of anyone, with the exception of maybe Luke Cage, who does make a brief appearance, which was nice. But you have to have her against somebody mental, because she's not very smart. She is smart, but not that smart. So season one, we had Kilgrave taking over people's minds, and you had Brawn versus Brains. It was nice. In this season, ah, just a lot of weird stuff. It's mainly about Jessica and Trish versus uh, a genius. A guy who has way too many college degrees. Which, by the way, how the hell did he afford that? Yeah, he's living off his brother's death settlement. But, man, how can you afford, like, four degrees? Law, engineering, some kind of medical thing. I think it was a chef, too. Uh, they're fighting him. Then you have some weird Hogarth story tacked on. Uh, we left her off, I think at the end of season two, she's basically dying. She has ALS, which sucks. And in this season, we see the disease progress. Uh, she tries to rekindle an old flame with, or she tries to rekindle a relationship with an old girlfriend. But, you know, she kind of screws it up. She breaks up that lady and her husband. That husband kills himself. It's just weird. It doesn't really add anything to Jerry Hogarth's story. Other than at the end, we say she's going to die alone. But you would expect some kind of arc. She's not repentant. She's still a jerk. Still going to die alone. So I didn't really understand what the point of that whole thing was. Other than to say, everybody loves Carrie Ann Moss as Hogarth. Yeah, she was good in, you know, everything else, but this was just playing an asshole for no reason. They could have cut that out, cut a bunch of episodes out. Although I have to say, the episodes in season three didn't drag like a lot of the other shows, where you'd have like maybe four, five really good episodes, and then two, three of filler. They all kind of flowed okay. One of the biggest problems with Jessica Jones season three is that it really wasn't Jessica Jones' show anymore. It was Trish Walker's show. Now this was one of the problems with season two is they gave Trish a much too large of a spot. You know, if you can't do anything with Jessica's character because you just don't know how to write her or you just don't know where to take her, that's cool. But then make it Hellcat. Don't make it Jessica Jones. It's just weird. You know, this is a similar problem to what we see in almost every other Marvel show, where season one is great, uh, really focused on the character, a lot of development, but then season two is all about side characters. Iron Fist, which, yeah, okay, they clearly didn't understand what to do with Danny Rand and the main guy kid and fight with crap. So they made it about Colleen Wing. 
Punisher season two was the Karen show. How many episodes did you need about Karen's background and her being a good journalist, blah, 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 when it's supposed to be a show about a gun-toting maniac? So one of the nice things is that finally we get to see a show where actions have consequences. So these are shows about people who are vigilantes go around beating the crap out of other people, but in general their personal lives don't show any consequences. If there's a consequence, it's like their lover or best friend or something is always like, oh, where were you? You left. You weren't around when I needed you, boo-hoo-hoo. At least in this one, when Trish goes around beating the living crap out of cops and murdering people, people are out looking for her. They want to put her in jail. It was a nice change of pace. So for that, I say, well done, Netflix. You know, in the world where you have superheroes, there would be consequences to going around beating people up. The only thing we really saw before this was Daredevil, he would, Matt Murdock would show up with shiners, with bruises and stuff. And people would think, man, this guy is a super clumsy blind guy. So the biggest problem for me is this is what happens when you get people writing a show where they don't understand what makes the characters popular in the first place. And this is really true of all of the Netflix shows, with the exception maybe of Daredevil. So you've got Luke Cage, uh, which is nice, but he was just boring. The second half of season one was just a real downer, especially when you compare it to the first half. Season two with Bushmaster I thought was okay, but there's too much, oh, I'm self-doubt, blah, blah. They want to make all the characters all heartwarming and relatable. Luke Cage is about being a black badass. Kicking ass and taking names. The Punisher. The Punisher was perhaps the biggest offender. For anyone who didn't see it, the whole last season was about women. Like these side women. And the last episode, you have Frank Castle going nuts in a warehouse. You have him shooting up the whole place. And then it cuts to two women talking about their feelings. And again, then it goes back to Frank Cancel stabbing people in the warehouse, going nuts with his knife, blood everywhere. And then back to two women sitting on a couch, drinking wine, and one asks, how do we even know if we deserve to be happy? What the fuck? Who wants to see that Frank Castle? It doesn't make any sense. Don't get me started on Iron Fist. Iron Fist Season 2 has a scene where the good guy, Danny Rand, and his girlfriend invite the bad guy over to his house for spaghetti dinner. Why in God's name would you ever think in a show about the greatest martial artist on the face of the earth, we would want to see the good guy and the bad guy talking about whether the spaghetti is al dente or not. These things just don't make sense. And when you have writers who don't respect the source material, you're going to get a crappy output. It is kind of sad to see the show go. Uh, I liked Jessica Jones Season 1 a lot. I really liked Daredevils. And it's sad that this whole thing with Netflix happens, although business is business. I'm hoping whatever Disney Plus ends up being, they have good writers who really understand the characters. In the future, I would definitely watch if they brought these shows back. Maybe a replacement for Iron Fist or at least someone who knows how to write a kung fu story. And it's kind of a shame that these characters never got to take their place in the Marvel MCU. I uh, would have loved to have seen them just as a small cameo in the background somewhere in Infinity War Endgame. But, que sera, sera. So until next time, guys, if you like the show, please like, subscribe. It really helps me get this channel out.